Today, is lenders' mortgage insurance a good thing? Hello again, I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Welcome to our latest post covering finance and property news with a distinctively Australian flavour. The Productivity Commission report was pretty scathing about lenders' mortgage insurance, or LMI, in its final report on competition in the financial services sector, which we discussed the other day. They recommended that ASIC should ensure that the interests of borrowers are adequately safeguarded in the LMI market. With 20% of borrowing households required to take LMI, and just two external providers, Genworth and QBE LMI, the Commission has explored the dynamics of the industry. They called it an unusual market, where there is little competitive pricing, nor competition in its traditional form. Is the market for LMI functioning, they asked? Could consumers effectively be paying twice? On one hand, potential borrowers are required to pay a premium for insurance, which protects the bank above a certain loan-to-value hurdle. That cost is often added to the loan taken, and the prospective borrower has no ability to seek alternatives from a pricing point of view. Banks who use external LMIs appear not to tender competitively. On the other hand, ANZ, for example, has an internal LMI equivalent and said it would be concerned about the concentration risk of placing insurance with just one of two external players, as the bank has more ability to spread the risks. The Commission probed into whether pricing of loans might be better in this case, though the bank said that there were many other factors driving pricing. They had previously noted that consumers should expect to receive a refund on their premium if they repay the loan. All highly relevant given the recent APRA suggestion that IRB banks might get benefits from lower capital for LMI loans, whereas today there is little capital benefit. So today we look at LMI in more detail. And by the way, if you value the content we produce, please do consider joining our Patreon program, where you can support our ability to continue to make great content. Here is the link, and it's also in the comments section below. The Australian mortgage industry has a feature which is relatively unusual internationally speaking. Lenders Mortgage Insurance, or LMI, is an insurance scheme which protects a lender from default by the mortgage borrower. It's not the same as mortgage protection insurance, which is insurance a borrower can purchase to protect against events like illness or other adverse factors. About 20% of borrowing households has LMI, so it is a substantial market. First-time buyers are the most common type of borrowers to use it. LMI is not mandated in Australia, but it's become normal industry practice for loans above 80%, including investment loans. Lender mortgage insurance is a policy which an insurer will write for a bank to protect the value above 80% in the case of default. Normally the premium, a one-off fee on loan drawdown, is paid by the borrowers directly or added to the loan amount. The premium varies by size of loan and loan-to-value ratio. Generally, loans of 80% LVR require LMI, and loans up to 95% or more can be covered. Loans over $1 million or 100% would require special quotations. Premiums vary by the type of loan and the type of borrower. First-time buyers will be charged more. So, for example, a loan of, let's say, $600,000 with a 95% LVR would incur a premium of around $21,400 for an existing borrower, that's about 3.6%, whereas a first-time borrower would be charged around $23,800 or 4% for the same facility. In our household survey, we asked borrowers about their understanding of LMI. First-time buyers, in particular, are not clear who benefits from LMI, whereas existing borrowers are slightly clearer that the insurance protects the bank. In the case of foreclosure, the bank would make a claim against the insurer, but it does not stop them also pursuing the borrower for the repayment of the debt. LMI is either provided by captive insurers within the banks or by the two major independent insurers, Gemworth and QBE LMI. Gemworth says, Most banks and financial institutions require you to contribute a deposit based on a percentage of the purchase price of your property. 
With Lenders Mortgage Insurance, lenders may allow you to borrow a higher portion of the purchase price, allowing you to purchase a property sooner and with a smaller deposit than would otherwise be required. This, of course, is the key benefit. People can borrow more sooner because the banks have higher levels of protection, so are more willing to lend. But, as Aussie says, it's really important to realise that only the lender is covered by this insurance. It offers no protection to you, the borrower. Alternatives to LMI are to wait and save up the 20% deposit, use a quasi-LMI from one of the banks as part of the loan, or seek a guarantor. Our research indicates that a number of potential first-time buyers are exploring these options because one way or another, LMI costs. Now, there are a couple of issues we should highlight. LMI is a premium paid or capitalised into the loan at inception. It's not portable, though. So if you switch lenders or buy a different property, the premium is foregone unless you ask, and then only sometimes. ASIC's Money Smart says you might get back some of the premium in the first year or so, but there is no guarantee. It is quite likely that you'll need to pay again. Now, I've been advocating for truly portable LMI facilities for a few years now. The other factor to consider is that the LMI insurers have concentrated risks in their portfolios. So if there were a major downturn and claims rocketed, they may have issues, just like the US had post-2007. The rating agencies are watching the insurers, and some were downgraded because of the risks implicit in the business. LMI insurers also provide enhanced support for securitization deals, which again enhances their exposure to risks. APRA, who regulates the LMIs in Australia, insists that LMI business is structured as a monoline insurer so that the systemic risk in LMI is not cross-linked to broader insurance categories. With such potential concentrated risks, will they be there if property prices fall significantly? LMIs may introduce additional credit cycle risks. The RBA Stability Review in September 2013 discussed the LMI industry, and they said the use of mortgage insurance will not necessarily moderate the amplitude of the housing credit cycle, however. Lenders may respond by relaxing standards because they believe the LMI is assessing the risk, an unintended consequence of having a second set of eyes, or because they believe that any loss is an LMI loss. They also make the point that Mortgage insurance is available in many jurisdictions, but extensively used in only a small number, including Australia, Canada, Hong Kong, the Netherlands and the United States. The structure of the mortgage insurance industry across these and other countries varies considerably and is affected by the domestic regulatory landscape and the extent of government participation in each jurisdiction. So, overall, whilst LMI may allow some to access the property market sooner and protects the banks from risks of loss, borrowers are paying for this insurance. And if borrowing more than 80%, they will have no choice, as this has become industry practice. There are systemic risks to LMI, and there is some confusion amongst consumers about the role of LMI. The fact LMI is generally not portable is problematic. In my view, LMI is at least partially responsible for the lofty property prices in Australia and it lifts the costs of entry into the market and, if capitalised, increases loan amounts on which interest is paid. It is a barrier to switching. Therefore, as the Productivity Commission suggested, the customer benefit of LMI should be reviewed by ASIC to see if it is really a good deal for mortgage applicants. As always, if you like what you've seen here today, please share and like the post and add a comment or question. I read them all. And if you want to join the growing band of subscribers who receive alerts when released new posts, do subscribe now by hitting the subscribe bell. And if you've already subscribed, many thanks. I really appreciate your support and participation. And if you value the content we produce, please do consider joining our Patreon program where you can support our ability to continue to make great content. The link is in the comment section below. I'm Martin North, the Principal Analyst of Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.